Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about revising your stack. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a software development company, when should we revise our current software technology stack to keep up with technology? Well, I would say you should do that when there is a tangible non-subjective benefit for you, or well, as non-subjective as you can make it, uh, to make the upgrade, where you have some concrete idea of well, what's gonna what's gonna work better. Uh, the reason why I say that is basically because the uh, alternatives is that you sort of fall into the pit of uh, having a lot of like emotional reasons as to try different things out. And I mean, I'm not saying that that doesn't have a value in of itself because an example would be that some companies uh, will pick a stack that is cooler or like they will use especially if you're not doing like long-term projects you might see companies using the latest and the greatest tools because they want to be a hip and progressive or like up-to-date IT company so they use the well, a lot of the latest uh, technologies for that reason and that can work in favor of like recruitment and so forth and job satisfaction and so forth and so forth. Uh, the thing to know there though is that that's uh, you, it's usually it's it's difficult to make that it's just in my opinion at the very least it's difficult to make that work um, over time. Uh, the reason being because when you ask software developers how to improve their tech stack or something like that, uh, usually a lot of them they will make a emotional de emotional decision or like give you an emotional response. It's it's actually very difficult to find software developers who have a level head about the so software development process and who will give you uh, advice on on what's going to matter what's going to make the difference and what's going to be something they do just because they really think it's cool. The average I would say is that it's almost it's less than 50-50. The odds of you getting to talk to someone who actually really knows their stuff um, if you're trying to improve your tech stack is fairly low and this is one of those reasons why I argue that uh, companies who don't know or doesn't have leadership or management who have uh, fairly extensive programming experience, they won't be able to figure this out uh, at all. Uh, basically what I'm saying is that this is probably, in my opinion, the greatest... Well, it's the greatest failing or like the greatest, like most ridiculous thing about our industry, which is that this decision has made your ma potentially made your impact on the overall health of your company. It's similar. It's it's a big. It's as big a decision as a, a manufacturing company deciding like what materials they're going to use or what type of automation process they're going to try to use on their conveyor belt or if uh, like if how they're going to structure their entire delivery system. It's a very important decision. It can basically, it, it can, it does, in, a, in a sense, it can make or break the, comp the company. And yet, no one, on average, in management has any knowledge whatsoever how to do this. And that's why, like, they only think that they, this, the same thing happens always, which is, the, as I said, in this case, it's actually a very dangerous thing. And one of the reasons why I argue that this idea that oh I'm just going to hire people who are smarter than me to tell me what to do, does it's a it's a ridiculous notion, in many cases because here that's not going to work because in order for you to be able to uh, to benefit from that other people are more like informed or so forth than you, you have to give them it has to be under circumstances where you can trust the answer and the reality is that if you do the thing that every manager does in this situation which is to go and ask your software developers how do we like what type of tech stack when should we upgrade etc etc if you don't know that by your own experience or you don't have a like a 
solid way of figuring that out. The odds of you, as I've said, to get an emotional answer is fairly high. It's actually very, very likely because I see it all the time. I see it literally all the time. The developers are under bombardment from all kinds of influencing sources about what should you use GraphQL, should you not use GraphQL, gRPC, is that something we should be using, should we be using Golang, should we be using Rust, should we do functional programming, reactive programming, should we do OOP programming, should we just skip all that and go directly to like an off-the-shelf solution like Gatsby or or uh, like uh, should we be like there are so many of these uh, different choices that can be made and every software developer usually has their own idea of what like a good stack looks like and what should be used and what should not be used and here's the kicker if they are not mature wise usually fairly experienced software developers who know what makes the difference they're gonna go with their gut and their emotions and that's what usually happens. I have this conversation quite often with software developers where I see very often teams devoting enormous amounts of resources to things that like that doesn't matter. They will like sit and add things or they will re refactor things or in some cases they will like rewrite an entire system uh, or an entire delivery process without any difference whatsoever to the bottom line. It's a completely emotional thing. And so uh, what I urge you to do here is that if it's not feasible for you to get competent uh, technical people in your company who you can trust with making good decisions on this topic, which I will be honest with you, it is difficult. This is actually the, the like this uh, problem is the mo most common question that I ask of uh, uh, people who are being hired for senior levels, uh, senior level positions, or architects, or so forth, and have them sort of explain to me, like walk them, th walk me through how they deal with this problem, because it's a sign of maturity for a person to understand how to deal with this problem, to understand that the technology that you are betting on is a means to an end. It's something that you're betting on, and there are pros and there are cons. Please explain to me what, you, from your perspective, what the pros and the cons are with this. And the depth and understanding of that topic very much will tell you how much of a senior you're dealing with. So what I suggest to you is to don't even phrase your question because when you inevitably do the thing that I was saying, you're going to go and have to ask your software developers most likely then about like upgrading to new technology because there is such a thing as being so outdated that it's a problem. But the thing that makes you figure out if you are in that state or not is not to ask are you using the most modern tools the question you should be asking is what problems are you having right now right here right here right now like what what issues do you have which is the thing that a lot of software developers forget that the whole reason they exist the whole reason all of this is happening is to improve some type of workflow automation is in its essence a matter of a co it's a cost benefit analysis you don't automate something that nobody like that takes like two seconds to do and nobody has a problem with that's a wasted effort what you're looking for are wins in optimization of workflows and product productivity and so forth and the same thing goes for you as a software developer so when you open with the question what problems do you have uh, you're usually in a situation where the software developers will tell you their pain points and then from there you ask okay how do we solve those pain points because the focus shouldn't be if you what tech you're using if you're using a specific language or if you're using something else the focus should be how do we deliver as quickly as possible and as high quality of a product that we can possibly produce that's the, that's the whole thing. And that doesn't have to start by asking, are we using the latest tech? It should start by asking, being, as I like to say, problem oriented. Now it's very likely that when you start going into solution mode, once you have identified the problems, uh, some it's an almost inevitable, as I said, that some people are gonna go, yeah, we could fix all of our problems if we just used CSS and JS, or we used React, or we used something, something. And then, in my opinion, all you can really do here is to pray and hope that you have a, uh, a set, uh, you have some very experienced people who are worth listening to within the company. And the way you usually hear the voice of those people is when they start saying that, well, 
the only problem like they, they can be very concrete about the improvements that's going to happen the problem here is which is the scary part for managers you don't have any knowledge most likely of the De like uh, relating to the details of the software de delivery cycle which means that since you don't have that knowledge the answer you get from someone who's bullshitting you and the answer you're gonna get from someone who is really really uh, like really like knows their stuff is likely going to sign all sound almost the same because it's a fall it's a very false pretense this thing where people think that the incompetent software developers they're always so bad that you can hear that they don't really know what they're saying no 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 the people who, even the philosophers who have really shitty ideas, who will fuck up your company to the point where you have no idea, can be actually pretty good at uh, and decent at software, but they're not very good at architecture, business mindset, and like they don't actually have the experience to do this. But they will talk and about the trendiest tools with passion, and they will convince you that everything is functional these days, or everything is about lambda functions, everything is about goal line. They will make a sales pitch based on their own personal interest and unless you really know your shit you won't be able to hear the difference so what I want you to take away from this is that the way that you know when to upgrade your tech is when you have a problem a real problem something that is actually slowing you down or causing a lot of sh friction within the company then you should consider upgrading and then you should be focused on what problems are you trying to solve and pick the stack accordingly you can of course play the like catch up to the trends and so forth which is not an uncommon thing for consultancies and agencies and so forth to do for example because it's a way for you it's a recruitment tool basically it gives you the right atmosphere in your company and so forth uh, but uh, as I like to say, the like that atmosphere. Uh, made that pitch uh, once actually to uh, an old uh, employer who was very much into that space. That oh, we are a trendy company. We're using all the latest tools. And I go, yeah, but you want to be a profitable, a profitable company. Because the problem with being very trendy and like experimenting uh, widely without any type of boundaries or any type of uh, reasoning behind it is that it's actually just a cost to you and what you're actually doing is it's sort of like giving your kids candy it's a short-term thing because the people who are telling you that they want to use the latest tools etc etc they're going to get really really frustrated uh, or some other people are going to get frustrated when all this experimentation starts l turning into legacy because the experimentation is just fun for a little while after a little uh, but after a while once the novelty wears off unless you've really invested in a good solution you're going to end up in a really bad situation and people are going to complain more about the fact that they're using all of this stuff and you're going to re regret a lot of the decisions that you have made and so my suggestion to you is as i said don't even think about things from the perspective of, we should be using the latest tech you should be thinking about what problems are you facing as a company and how do you solve those problems and in some cases in many cases you're going to go arrive at that some upgrades are necessary but don't make that the focus because the focus of automation and technology is not the, the technology itself. It is the value that that technology is bringing you. Have a great day.